Hello and welcome back to Cloud Native Takes. My name is Robert and I'm welcome again with my guest, Matt. Matt, welcome. Hello. And today we'll be talking about um, Kubernetes distribution. There's a bunch of Kubernetes distributions out there. So how does one pick the right Kubernetes distribution? So first one to ask Matt is, what is an actual Kubernetes distribution? So you can think of a Kubernetes distribution sort of like you can a Linux distribution or specifically like a GNU Linux distribution. You've got, you know, SLE, OpenSUSE, Ubuntu, RHEL. There's all these different Linux distributions and they're built the same way, but you can take your applications that you download or build for uh, Linux and run them typically in any of them. And that's the same thing with Kubernetes distributions. They come from different people and different organizations who took Kubernetes with its APIs, with its manifests, with its types, with its features, and they've packaged it up just differently. And those applications that you can run in one, you can typically run in the others the same way you can port something from, you know, one Linux distribution to another. Okay. And so, you know, that being said, if uh, how many are there? That's a good question. Uh, there's no place that keeps track of all of the Kubernetes distributions that are out there um, because somebody can go just create their own on a weekend and stick it up on GitHub. There's mm -hmm. no place keeping track of it. We know that it's more than a hundred different distributions and there are many different varying distributions for different use cases. So there's a CNCF certified and we all see it in the landscape where we can see all the distributions of Kubernetes in there. Um, what does it actually mean to be CNCF certified when it comes to a distribution of Kubernetes? So what they look at when they go to certify it is what APIs have you implemented? What things like Kubernetes has the workloads API. You can do jobs, you can do um, stateful sets, things like that. They look to see, does your distribution implement those APIs and have those features? And if it implements things, then it can be certified that it's conformant, that it's doing what you expect out of Kubernetes, that somebody who created the distribution didn't rip out whole feature sets that somebody would expect in Kubernetes only to have other things. And it kind of provides you a look into here's what we know and is certified to have those APIs and those components I expect out of a base level Kubernetes distribution. Okay. Um, with all these distributions out there, and if we, even if we narrow it down to the ones that are CNCF certified, is there one typically better than the other? Um, it kind of depends on your use case. There are some Kubernetes distributions that are designed to run really small, and you might use them out at the edge. And they they have the same API features, but they've changed some of the internals to make things run smaller. Some distributions take that basic Kubernetes API and add a bunch more to it and give you more features out of the box. And apps written to those extra features aren't portable from one thing to another, but they give mm -hmm. you more than you might otherwise get. Um, there's a bunch of different distributions. You know, Some are focused on security and the security libraries that were built for Kubernetes, maybe something uh, like a certified version for some certification spec out there. And so many of the different distributions will do different things. And then there's distributions for different companies. Um, some companies you might get support from may have a supported version that's their own distribution. And they know the ins and outs of that one really well so that they can support it. So the short answer is there really isn't one that's necessarily better than another. They're mostly different from others in ways around your use cases. Where do you get support from? Are you doing edge? Are you doing data center? What are you doing? That's when you'll find a distribution maybe that's right for you in your use case. Awesome. Um, and you mentioned on something that some might have some under, they might have had some underlying internals but if I build my application to run in a certified version of Kubernetes, am I locked into it or can I port it? Is that the case or? If you built against the Kubernetes APIs and it's just certified Kubernetes and the, the default included Kubernetes APIs, you should be able to port it from one, from one place to another. You could run it in Azure, you could run it on-prem, you could run it in Amazon, you could run it in RKE, you could run it in K3S, you can run it all over the place. But quite often people, when they run it in public clouds, might grab something like a public cloud database or mm. uh, some other feature, an object storage in that public cloud, 
And those things, because they break out of the Kubernetes APIs, that's not portable from one environment to another. Awesome. Well, Matt, thank you for your time. And we'll see everybody else in your community.